Hi, kitty cats. Today on the show, I want to talk about why I missed recording a show last week. And then I want to talk about a response that I got to an article explaining my absence last week in which I was called female. And then finally, I want to discuss whether or not I buy into this rhetoric that genetics is gender as I kind of brought up in that article that explained my absence last week, which is why I didn't make a video. All this and more on the Dingbat Diaries for the week of August 31st, 2023. I am Amethysta Herrick, your host is for the program. Before I get started, I do want to mention that all of my work is, to support, is supported by subscribers to our website called Gender Identity Today, and that's going to be linked in the show notes. So if you like this content, um, you, will, you can subscribe to Gender Identity Today. Subscribers, so you know, receive emails when I and when other con uh, contributors to the website publish new content, and uh, subscribers are also able to interact directly with me through comments, as you'll find out in a moment. And depending upon the level of subscription, um, subscribers have access to a private Discord server and private monthly events. So you can look for that in the show notes and subscribe. All right, what happened last week? Well, you may be looking at a slightly different backdrop here. I'm sitting in my office to make this video. I did actually shower, which is nice. I did put on some makeup, but I kind of didn't want to set up the video camera because candidly, I'm tired. Um, I got that website that I mentioned up and running, Gender Identity Today, but I've also been making podcasts and videos like this one. I've also been writing a lot. And I also have been working on a project. I'm not going to talk about the project. It may include a television program, and it may also include promotional materials, including websites, etc. Another thing, and I've written about this, I have a very difficult time resting. This is something I've worked on for a while and really for with limited success. And I say that because I tend to measure my self-worth by my productivity, you know, if I'm putting out a lot of videos, if I'm putting out a lot of putting out a lot of po podcasts, if I write a lot of articles, as long as I'm working, I feel I'm valuable. Now I realize I still have a long way to go. All right, because last week I happened to have a very deep reaction to a conversation that I had. This reaction, this conversation, I guess, really shook me to my core. And I've written a series of articles about it over the past week. I will link to those in the show notes. But I wrote a series of articles that really explain this kind of dark hole that I went down, this, this really dark path. And to be totally on the level, I ended up suicidal. That's kind of hard to say. Maybe it's hard to hear. Um, but I thought it was worth saying. And I, I do want to make clear my life isn't perfect, certainly not, and I still really have a lot of work to do inside my head. So last week, um, I was in a hotel uh, in the mountains. It was not a hospital. It was a hotel. But I sat and I wrote in my journal and I thought for a long time and I tried to rest as best as I could. Now I came back. Obviously, <laughs> but I'm still shaken, and I wanted to discuss that only because I wanted to be honest with everybody about it. I want to be honest about my life, and I want to be honest that, or I want to make clear that the statistics that you can find, which will be linked in the show notes, the statistics you'll find about suicidal ideation in transgender people are shocking, and they're real. Gender dysphoria, body dysmorphia, these are real. They are very difficult problems with which to deal. And that was what I dealt with last week, as best as I could. It's very difficult to deal with these completely. And that was the topic of 
another one of the articles that I wrote. In fact, you know, I said it was a series of articles. One in particular I wrote had to do with dealing with the, with the fact that I know I am not female. So in this article, I related handwriting to my femininity because part of this crisis has been to realize that while I can be feminine with my hair and my makeup and wearing this nice pretty purple dress, I cannot be female. I got a response um, from a dear friend of mine named Sabine. Hi, Sabine. And I want to address it. I, I actually, for what it's worth, I tried doing that on the website. And um, Ghost is kind of odd for me right now. I'm not able to comment on my own posts. I'm going to have to figure this out. But in any event, I want to address this um, here now in the video because Sabine called me female. And I understand the spirit of this response. Sabine said that she is not a scientist. She is a philosopher. And I am a, a scientist. I mean, I started off as a biologist. I went into chemistry, even though I am now a writer. So I want to explain right now why I chose the particular words that I did. And I want to, to, to say that, that I, I choose these words because it's important to be clear in this political environment. It's kind of crazy, the idea that you have to be so, so clear that you have to come with like a, a textbook full of, full of uh, substantiation before you can make a single sentence. But that kind of seems to be how this political environment goes. So while I talk about femininity and, f and being female, I want to start off with an analogy because it's just kind of how I teach. I love to use analogy. So I want to talk about hair color, in particular being blonde. Now, hair color, or blonde, I should say, is an abstraction. There is no scientific objective standard of blondness. Some people appear blonde. Some people appear non-blonde. Maybe you'll get four of those people in a room and they can start a band. I'm not sure. But some people appear blonde, some appear non-blonde, and some people appear kind of in the middle. The concept, blonde, simply implies light hair but scientifically does not specify a complete implementation of blondness. And that's because, at least in part, blonde is a complex of characteristics. Now, an interesting little scientific tidbit. Genetically, being blonde is a recessive trait. Here's a crazy thing. Neither my mother nor my father appeared blonde. I, however, was you might say, I was assigned blonde at birth. But if you're looking at me now, presumably you can see I do not identify with being blonde. And there's a reason for that. What blonde means is contextual to the social environment. I happened to grow up in Southern California in the 1980s, and blonde to me means surfers, surf culture, um, bimbo culture, um, Baywatch, blonde to me, is not Brad Pitt, who is more or less blonde. I mean, you know, you could probably make the case. Blonde to me is not Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. Blonde to me is Pamela Anderson. Um, ironically, not blonde. Ironically, not assigned blonde from birth. But if we talk about my family, you can look at my family and you'll see that one sister and I were both assigned blonde from birth, at birth. And then I have one sister who was assigned non-blonde at birth. And then I have one sister who's, you know, kind of in the middle. But you see, genetics is like that. We cannot predict with 100% accuracy how offspring is going to present their blonde characteristics. In fact, I would say I have one sister who, is, who appears to be inter-blonde. She's not quite blonde, but she's not quite non-blonde. And it turns out, a crazy fact, through modern technology, okay, bleach, we can make people assigned non-blonde at birth appear blonde. Oh my gosh. I know, it's crazy. But it does raise the question... If a person bleaches their hair, are they really blonde? 
Let me bring back up Pamela Anderson. She was born with relatively dark hair, but if you see her, she has always, or at least since she got popular, she's always been blonde. I mean, is she? I mean, maybe we could say she's blonde, but Pamela Anderson wasn't assigned blonde at birth. She's really only trans hair color. Do we care? Should we care? Should there be laws to protect those of us assigned blonde at birth from those merely posing as blondes? Hopefully the absurd of, absurdity of that sinks in. Because now let me move on to sex. Sex also is an abstraction. Scientifically, a sex means being able to produce one gamete, a size of gamete that is either large or small relative to the other type of gamete. But scientifically, sex does not specify a complete implementation. Now, unlike being blonde, sex is actually binary. Um, it's almost universal across nature, actually, that there are only two types of gamete, both sperm and ova. In humans, uh, that they follow that pattern. There are only two types of gamete, sperm and ova. And the abstractions correspond to two words. Male, somebody, uh, a human who's capable of producing sperm, and female, a human capable of, of producing ova. But that does not mean that individuals necessarily follow, fall into one of those two categories. Because, as it turns out, genetics is just not like that. Just like with blondness, we cannot predict with 100% accuracy whether offspring is going to be able to produce a particular gamete, or any gamete at all. There are people you will meet who appear like they could produce ova. There are people who appear like they could not produce ova. And then there are going to be people who fall in the middle. Maybe they can make both, ova and sperm, or maybe they can make neither. But that's why we have a different concept, to represent the individual expression of the genetics. And that concept is gender. Gender falls into, you know, two obvious categories that tend to correlate with the two obvious categories of sex, masculine and feminine, man and woman that correlate with male and female. But I will say flat out, that is not genetics, not necessarily genetics. And I can prove that. Watch this. Turns out my mother could not produce sperm, but I got half of her genetics. My father actually could produce sperm. Who knew? And I got half of his genetics. I ended up being assigned male at birth, but I do not identify with being male, much like I was assigned blonde at birth, but I do not assign, di identify with being blonde. Much like being blonde, what is feminine is also contextual to the social environment. Southern California in the 1980s, again, m femininity meant something very different from, it, from what it means today. And if you want to go really nuts, you know, think about pre-revolution France or think about, say, South Korea today or even 50 years ago. Gender and femininity has to do with many other things. Clothes, hair, voice, mannerisms. There are many other characteristics that fall into what is masculine and what is feminine. And these are things that the social environment I don't want to say decides, but these are things that, that become norms in the social environment. And that's where gender comes from. It does not necessarily come from the capability of making a particular gamete. Now, here's a crazy thing. It turns out, really, that through modern technology, okay, clothes and surgery, we can make people assigned male at birth appear female. I know, crazy, right? But if a person wears a female's clothes and goes through gender reassignment surgery, 
these are the sorts of things that, that are defined that are, you know, females would have by the social environment. Are these people still female? I mean, maybe we could call them female, much like maybe we could call Pamela Anderson blonde. But if they weren't assigned female at birth, even if they look female, that's kind of okay. They're just transgender. So to sum up, to say to my friend Sabine in particular, Sabine, I own that I am a woman because that is a gender and that at least is not genetically, you know, a genetic abstraction. But I also own that I cannot be assigned female at birth any more than I can assign myself non-blonde at birth. It's very frequent, particularly in this political environment, to conflate sex with gender. And when I wrote that article, for what it's worth, to a certain extent, in fact, why I ended up going off on this dark path that, that you know left me sitting in a hotel room in the mountains, I fell victim to that myself, to a certain extent. So the last thing I want to cover is, do I really believe genetics defines gender? Well, in a word, no. But I, but I have a lot of time to talk here, so I'll keep going. My response, having, you know, ending up suicidal, ending up in the mountains, even ending up writing the three articles that I did, that reaction was a response to an existential crisis. I looked at my life. I looked at the efforts I've made in work, my 25-year career before I retired to begin writing. I looked at my efforts with my family. I looked at everything I had written up until today. I really looked at my entire self. And ultimately, I judged it inadequate. I mean, this is kind of a typical reaction for me. And, okay, I'm working on it, all right? But I kind of found my entire life lacking. And that hurt. I asked myself, why should I keep moving at all? I asked myself, has my life been worth all my trouble when I can never be what I really want to be, which was assigned female at birth. Now, I came home. Again, obviously. I believed enough. I believed in what I'm doing enough to keep trying. Deep down, I know I am living the life I've wanted all along. And deep down, I know that I'm the happiest that I've ever been. I had a very difficult week. Well, I've had a couple of couple of difficult weeks. These existential crises, thankfully, are very rare. I kind of doubt this is going to be my last, because I kind of happen to be the kind of person who cares about and thinks about these kinds of things. So I will say... I do realize I have much more work to do for my family, for my community, and most importantly, for myself. I can't just walk away now. I know that. Too much rides on it. And I think on that note, I'll go ahead and close. That's it for the Dingbat Diaries for the week of August 31st, 2023. Again, if you enjoyed this content, and I hope you did, um, please like the video or the audio, the podcast, and please subscribe to receive new content when it uh, is available. And of course, please feel free to go to our website, Gender Identity Today, in the show notes and subscribe there. Doing so will help me continue this fight for all of us myself, and for you, for everybody, this fight for identity and gender being normal aspects of the human experience. All right. Thank you. Bye.